The most interesting of the cuts in some ways is Jerry the King Lawler. So, a true end of an era, Jerry the King Lawler, who had been with the company for 32 years, barring a uh, relatively brief sabbatical after WWF fired his wife at the time, Stacey Carter, has been let go from the WWE after after WWE doesn't renew Lawler's contract. Um, He's still got a Legends deal, though, it should be said, but... Mostly used as a commentator during his WWE tenure, Lawler partially lost his voice after suffering a stroke last year. And as he's a commentator, I guess they just went, they just said, forget it, I suppose, which seems such a big shame. Well, 32 years. Unbelievable. It really is. And he did, he he went on strike, or he quit, when they let his wife go, what was her name, Cat? The Cat, yeah, Stacy Carter. They let her go, and I guess to show his disapproval, he quit. That lasted about a week. <laughs> so they said, well, you, you're not getting any more money. Oh, well, wait a minute. Uh, I, I'm going to readjust this. And I th- did they hire her back? No, they never hired her back. They hired Lawler back because uh, Paul Heyman replaced him. And after that whole WCW, WWF invasion catastrophe, Lawler came back after about seven or eight months or something. So, yeah, other than that, it was an unbroke. He was suspended once. But... Uh, what was he suspended for? It was... Um, do we have to go into this now? <laughs> no, we don't, we don't have to. But... No. Okay, uh, there was an accusation made. Against him in the early 90s, he was suspended for a few months off WWF TV. Having well, he was involved in an incident. Something like that, and it was going to go to trial. Uh, anyway, he uh, he got let off the charges eventually on that thing. Uh, Lawler told PW Insider the following after being uh, not renewed. One other thing that a lot of people wonder about my career has probably ended with the WWE, and that's and that's it's just one of those things that goes with my getting over with all the stuff that happened with the stroke, and it was my my just sitting behind a desk and doing commentating on a match again was extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. So, where's Lawler's voice now? Do you know? Well, this is another little thing I heard through the little grapevine. You know, that grapevine has a lot of long vines on it. But I heard he had another one, a a minor one. But he did have another one within the last two or three weeks, I heard. Really? Or maybe a month. But must have been not a lot to it. But... See, I was supposed to make the Evansville Convention, and I had been booked for that for, I don't know, a couple months. And as it got closer, you know, my doctor told me, he said, well, you know, you. I wish you wouldn't go on that trip. He didn't tell me not to go, but he told me that, you know, it might be better that you sit this one out. So I didn't go, and I really missed going because I I always enjoyed going to Evansville, one of my favorite towns to go to. And it was in a building that was about 100 years old but had been kind of kept up pretty well, and I liked those old buildings. But So I didn't go. But talking to the guys who went, Lawler is not the Lawler of old, of course. And uh, his voice is is not the same as it was. <clears throat> so, but they said he looked pretty good. And other than that, he's, the people, you know, they love Lawler. Mm-hmm. You know, Lawler, they've always liked him. And when I was working an angle with him, he was, we were two baby faces who were going after the belt. Then I think he turned heel. It was the shortest, longest program I've ever been in. The main one, only I only had three matches with him in the main, in the main angle. Only three matches. But they they were good. They uh, they all sold out. Not all of them, but I mean the start of it sold out completely. You know, to sell out of Memphis, that's eleven thousand seats. 
and they were there. And all the other towns, they sold out. So you could always tell how an angle was going to do by the first night in Memphis because that TV was current. They play at Memphis, uh, and then the Monday Night House goes off what you did on TV that previous Saturday. But the other towns were always a week late. So if Memphis sold out, you can say, well, Louisville will sell out, Evansville will sell out, Nashville will sell out, and that's when they used to run Lex Lexington to Kentucky, had a sellout. See, Lexington was running that. They, they, they have a basketball program there that's just it's tremendous. And they got a 20,000-seat arena, Rupp Arena, in Lexington for the University of Kentucky Wildcats basketball team. And we didn't sell 20,000 seats, but we we they'd cut it in half. So we'd have 10,000 seats, and it sold out. So we only went there once a month. But but that's what you could tell what you could expect the next week. So, and Jerry Jarrett was talking to me one day. He said, listen, you know how you tell what your next week's going to be? And he told me the, the formula. He said, if we do, say we do $25,000. Now, this is 1980 prices, which would be like sixty now or maybe 75000 and ticket prices now and the, the way things are. He said if we did twenty five thousand in Memphis, we can do twelve thousand in Nashville, twelve thousand in Louisville, and I think Evansville would do a little less than that. They'd do like eight or ten. So you could almost say within a thousand dollars what the houses were going to be. Of course, Jerry Jarrett loved that. <laughs> when do you promote something and you go in there and you say, oh, it's going to do this and it's going to do that. He knows before he goes because he knew his territory. So, but uh, the deal I worked with Lawler, he was, he was over strong. And then after he turned heel, I turned heel. I mean, we're going all over the place now, but, uh, but he was really, really, over in that territory. Now he talks about 32 years with the WWE mm -hmm. or WWF. Mm -hmm. That is a hell of a run. But I've always, I tell everybody that wants to get into wrestling, you're like football coaches. You get hired to get fired. Most of those guys that go through WWE, some of them have never seen the inside of a WWE ring in a live event. They may see it doing NXT, but they never go to the main roster and they will spend about a year or two years down at NXT. Then they're gone. And unless you catch them in NXT, you don't know really what, what they can do. Okay, the Chad guy you were talking about, Chad Stevenson, he went through Gable, NXT. Gable Stevenson. Gable, Stevenson I'm yeah. sorry, G Gable Stevenson. He went through NXT. Yeah, uh, very uh, briefly, he started doing some dark matches on SmackDown as well before he was let go, but he only ever did one on-screen appearance, uh, actually wrestling. Mm -hmm. How did he look? Oh, he looked great standing there. He looked like a great athlete, mm -hmm. but yet, you know... You can look like a great athlete, and you might not be able to sell one ticket. Look, but I have seen some guys who don't, they look like crap, and they could sell out the place. Now, look, tell me that. Lawl has never been inside of a gym in his entire life, and he drank, you know, full, full sugar Cokes and fried, you know, and ate fried chicken. Yep. He, that's the difference, really. And he was never an amateur wrestler, but he had everything that, it's like, Gable Steveson and Jerry Lawler have got everything the other doesn't. They've gone in the opposite direction. Yeah. And one was a major draw for decades, and the other one was Gable St Steveson. <laughs> you know, major draw for decades, and the other one was Gable Steveson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. Um, if Vince McMahon was still in the in charge of WWE, do you think he would have just signed Lawler again out of loyalty, or do you think Vince would have got rid of him as well? 
No, I think he would have re-signed him. But re-signed him for what, really? I mean, I don't think Lawler took this the bad way. I don't. I don't think he wanted to go anyway. If he hadn't made enough money by now, 32 years of steady, steady pulling in that big paycheck. So, and Lawler, he lived in Memphis and everybody knew him in Memphis. Everybody. I think he's more over in Memphis than Elvis was. And, and if he wanted, and this was back in the days when we were still running Memphis on a weekly basis. Well, he'd go out and he'd find him a sponsor. Our sponsor would approach him and say, can we do a deal with you, a furniture store, let's say. They advertise locally, not all through the South or not through the country, just locally, just to Memphis. And he would pick that up for six months and then a, 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 a car dealership. And no, and no telling what... Uh, he used to get cars, brand new cars. They just give it to him. Just do the deal with us, and you can have the car. And he would he would get all kind of cars. He get all kind of like a TVs and furniture and, and all this stuff because he made those he made those local commercials. And like I say, I think he was over more in Memphis than than Elvis was. It's hard to believe, isn't it? More more over than Elvis, but it's funny, I think you know, he did I, it. I watched I watched that Baz Luhrmann Elvis film on the plane. It's yeah, the only film it? I watched. It's a good film, actually. And yeah. there's tons of historical inaccuracies which really annoy me, but like, like what? Like everything. It's like Bohemian mm -hmm. Rhapsody. It's like I'm a big Queen fan. And just there were so many Oh, you know, for artistic reasons we change it. I hate that. It's interesting enough how it is. Just leave the story out to be accurate. Yeah. Anyway. Did they mention my name? Uh they said that you and Elvis sold out the Memphis Coliseum in a in a three part <clears throat> in yeah, a in yeah, a trilogy. Yeah. You put Elvis over in the end. I did. Yeah. I had to. You, it you, made you, me... you, you couldn't resist those karate chops. <laughs> yeah. Well the old story about Memphis, <clears throat> he couldn't come down to the Coliseum. Too many people he was too famous, really. Because people would be bothering him all night. But they used to have it in what they call the uh, another place called Ellis Auditorium, which was like more like a theater. And they say that they would slip him in after the matches started because he would only want to come for the main event. They would slip him in, and he would go up to where the projection booth is, and he would watch the matches or the main event. Uh uh, what he wanted to see from there. And sometimes they would, they'd rearrange the card so he could watch the main event because the main event was on before a last match they put on. That's because that, that would give Elvis time to get out and get away before the people came out. But he was a huge, huge wrestling fan. Mm. And you know, the, uh, the jumpsuits that Lawler wore later, Oh, yeah, the second Elvis died. And then all of a sudden, Jerry was the new king of hey, Memphis and stole the jumpsuits. Then hey, he, he did that the week of his death, I think. I think Elvis had just been put in the ground, I guess. And Lawler came on Memphis TV live that Saturday. I think he died on Tuesday or something. I mean, this may be the next week. But Lawler had on the... What's that outfit called? Said so you got her the jumpsuit, but you know the 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 clothing that Elvis would wear. Mm. And then Lana started wearing it, and he said, "Hey, don't worry, King didn't go anywhere. I'm, I'm the new. <laughs> I, I'm the king of. I'm I'm the king of Memphis." And he took that. Then Bill Dundee, <laughs> he started wearing it too. So you had both of them out there wearing the same thing. Trying to capitalize on uh, on Elvis's popularity. Yeah, they should have got Colonel Tom Parker to manage one of them at one point. That would have been a, they, a full they, circle thing. Hey, have you read that whole story? But uh, this has nothing to do with wrestling. Tom Parker made almost as money as Elvis did. Yeah, as much 50 money. Fifty percent split, supposedly at one point. Who knows? What a deal, huh? Oh yeah. 
So he bought, didn't he buy him from Sam Phillips for like what thirty five thousand dollars, which was like an astronomical amount? How do you know? How do you know about Sam Phillips? Well, how do I know about a lot of things before I was born? You, you read about him, yeah, of course. But the Sun Studios was right down the street. I bet it was no more than I may be wrong, eight to ten blocks away from Channel Five. If you went, if you went out of the TV studio. And you took a right, you would go right by Sun Studios. 